Okay, everybody, it is October. Think of your favorite sports metaphor, and that is what we are going with. We are getting down to the wire to save democracy, and it's all I'm talking about. There is no time to dilly-dally, so I'm going to get right to it. I have some serious choice words for people who have still not made their plans to vote. What in the world are you waiting for? Go! Scram right now. Go check your voter registration. Go do it right now. Then come back and listen to this episode. Not much is more important than listening to me speak, but registering to vote is one of the few things I can think of that is. You can't sit this one out. You just can't. Oh, What's that? You don't want to vote for your own interests? That's fine. Vote for the rights of someone you love. You don't love anyone? Okay, that's fine. Vote so that you are entitled to complain later. That's good too. No vote, no right to complain. You thought you were going to stump me. I know. It's fine. Voter registration deadlines vary state by state, so please go online and find out what your deadline is. And even if you are a consummate voter, and good for you if you are, double check that you are still registered because (laughs) conservatives everywhere are doing their best to purge people like you from voter rolls. You know what? I have choice words for those partisan hacks as well. This is Choice Words. I'm Samantha B. My guest today is Massachusetts Governor Maura Healey. She is a, exactly what you want in a politician. I'm a big fan. We talk about the stakes of the coming month and beyond. So take a listen and make good choices. Sam, I've been a huge fan, admirer huh. for so many years, and I, I can't believe I get a chance to talk to you. Are you it's kidding awesome. me? I'm a huge admirer of yours. I just respect you to the Thank you. absolute hilt. So Thank you. Thank you. I'm amazed that you said yes. It warms Why my I? heart. I don't awesome. know. You never know. Awesome. You never know. You know and- what? It's your, I mean, I love our cable and our networks and, you know, mm-hmm. newspapers, but if you really want to reach people, like, this is where it's at, you know? I really appreciate you saying that. Mm -hmm. So the opening salvo, I guess, in this conversation is the subject of choice, choices that we make, impactful choices in our lives, even something small that kind of changed everything. And you are a sitting governor. You are making big choices, big decisions all the time. Just to start off the conversation, is your metric different when it comes to a personal choice versus a choice that you kind of When you're making choices for large groups of people, for an entire state's worth of people, Mm -hmm. do you run things through a different set of criteria? Well, it's it's interesting. Like, I like making the big decisions. I'm very comfortable Mm -hmm. making the big decisions. But then there's this part of me where, like, I've spent four months trying to pick out the color of the mats (laughs) I want in the the basement for the gym, right? Like yeah. Joanna, my partner would say like, I, like I, I would be a terrible personal shopper, like my indecisiveness <laughs> around you know, picking out shoes or what have you. Mm-hmm. Thank goodness for my job. Um, I am very comfortable making the big decisions. And, right. you know, I, I do that uh, by trying to be thoughtful, you know, and, and, and right. careful about that. Right. Were you always like that growing up? Oh, I've been indecisive about like all things personal my whole life. I mean, when it comes to clothes, when it comes to even mm-hmm. I, like I, I fl- I'm one of these people back in the day before it's now too hard with the computer to flip the station. But remember, you used to just like turn the knob. Oh, like sure. I would, I, I, I would be constantly turning the knob, looking for you know, looking for a different song, new song. So there's right. that there's that part of me. Um, but I mean, fortunately, I, I guess for the people in Massachusetts, oh, yes, <laughs> I yes. don't I don't get paralyzed making the big decisions. That's good. You don't dither on the big Massachusetts decisions, but you can't pick those. Ma- you know what? I'm the mirror opposite of you, so I'll pick the mats for your gym, and I will be hopeless to to govern (laughs) an entire state's worth of people. We have one month approximately left 
to pretty much save democracy. How are you? <laughs> How are you reflecting on that in this time? And by the way, I'm amazed that you even had even a small amount of time to sit with me. I feel like everything is happening, everything everywhere all at once. It's so true. Oh, that was a good movie, by the way. It um, was. Look, I served as attorney general during the Trump years, uh, yes. and I know what is on the line. I also right. know that even in a state like Massachusetts, which people think of as blue, we are not insulated because as much as I protect rights and freedoms here in mm -hmm. Massachusetts, um, I can't protect people in Massachusetts um, from you know a person, if, if somebody is elected who is going to ban abortion or right. defund the Department of Education. So, you know, I am spending, um, when I'm not doing state work, I am spending as much time as I can on the campaign trail for Kamala Harris and Tim Walz, um, just encouraging people to, to get out there to vote and to understand what's at stake. Right. When you take the temperature, when you're out and about talking to the people of Massachusetts, what are you hearing from them? Well, you know, I think a lot of the concerns that people are talking about affordability, the cost of right. housing. It's something we've tried to, to really tackle here in Massachusetts. It's something, again, that Kamala Harris is, is going to tackle as president. People are tense, right? I mean, right. there's a lot of angst right now. And it's understandable because things have become so divisive and vitriolic. And, you know, the amount of misinformation, disinformation, um, the amount of, of fear um, that's been sort of exploited, right? Fabricated and exploited. It's yes. got people really worked up and and stressed out. And I think, you know, in many respects, people are, a lot of people, and hopefully the majority of voters are just looking for some calm, some steadiness. Some steadiness. It's very disheartening when the people who are running for the highest office in the land are just openly, admittedly sharing dangerous disinformation. Yeah. You just kind of go like, what, what, what are we doing here? Is this, why is this, hap why is this happening? How can this be permitted to happen? Yeah. Well, it, it happened because Donald Trump became the leader of the Republican so, party. I mean, cool. and unfortunately for our country, because I believe it's important for us to have two strong parties. Yeah. Um, I don't see that changing until Donald Trump is no longer the leader of the Republican party. You know, right. I'm somebody, I'm a Democrat. I, I, but I prided myself on working well with Republicans. Mm -hmm. um, my predecessor is Governor Charlie Baker, popular, most popular governor in the country at one point, Republican. He and I worked very well together. In fact, I still call him for advice. I work with some of my Republican governors, like Utah Governor Spencer Cox, great right. guy. He's leading a great initiative on how to disagree better, right? How, how to oh. have civil discourse, because it's okay to have policy differences, right? What's not okay is if you're lying about stuff, mm -hmm. um, you're lying to people, um, you're you're misrepresenting things in a way that's really harmful, and and you're just not being straight with the American public. And you know the the level to which things have devolved, really, as 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 led by Donald Trump, is just it's it's gotten us to this this really terrible place. And here we are talking about cats and dogs and these yeah. poor people in Springfield, Ohio, and these poor little kids who you know can't even go to school because yeah. you know nuts are calling in with bomb scares, all because of what 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 Trump and Vance are saying. So you yeah. know that's why I think you also see so many Republicans joining right. to support Harris because you know you're never going to agree with everything no. that somebody who's elected to serve you says or does, right? It's, it's just not but possible, but um, except maybe if you're their mother and then everything you do is right. But <laughs> right. like, yes. otherwise it's like, you've got to pick and choose here, you know? Yeah. And and uh, to me, the, the choice couldn't be clearer. It seems like in in some way the the seams are ripped. You know what I mean? Like you just like a little, a little ripper has come and just torn us asunder and we need a healing bomb. People just mm -hmm. want a steady hand. You're, it's what you said. You're never going to agree with one person, one figure in yeah. everything they do or say. That's never going, it's never happened and it never would happen. As the AG of Massachusetts, you sued Trump over 100 times. <laughs> but how many times do you wish you had sued him? Like 500? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh Infinite. Yeah, it was a dark time, Sam, you know, I, I can't, yeah. and actually kind of what a sad commentary that you have to use your power as a state attorney general just to keep 
bad things from happening right. to people in your state. I mean, Trump was trying to repeal the Affordable Care Act, rip away health care yeah. from people. And, you know, my job was to stand up and and protect against that. So it's kind of sad that we had to sue him so many times. I mean, we won uh, well over 80% of those lawsuits because, right. you know, what he was doing was so blatantly wrong. And it's also why we can't go back. Right. You were the first Democratic governor to publicly, cautiously urge Joe Biden to consider leaving the race. There must have been a political calculation. I bet that's a choice that you really agonized over to some extent. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, first of all, I'm somebody who never expected to be in politics. I never grew up wanting to run for office. That's a whole other story. But since I've been in this job, both as governor and as attorney general, you know, I I see how how high the stakes are, right? Mm -hmm. And you also have to sort of read the electorate and what's going on out there. And I just was really concerned that the Democratic Party, that we weren't putting our best foot forward. I have so much respect for President Biden, so appreciative of everything that the administration has has delivered, um, and also for his incredible career of public service. Uh, but you know, I I th- I thought it was an important question to to ask. Um, right. He did the honorable thing. He 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 put country right, right. ahead of himself. I wish other people would do that. Yes. Um, he put country ahead of himself. And it's been just incredible to, well, it's incredible to see that and then to see what, what Kamala Harris has been able to, to, to do. So I made that call because the stakes are so high. I mean, how different is, I mean, I think I, I think I already know the answer to this question, but can you believe how different the political landscape is now? from when you entered politics? It's sad, sort of, what has happened. I mean, we had an insurrection that was encouraged by the president of the United States, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just insane. Like, how did that happen? Um, How did we get to that point? You know, I think that the the fundamentals are still there, right? I mean, most Americans, we want the same thing. We want safe communities. We want our kids to be able to to, to go to school and be educated. We want access to health care. We ought to want to be able to have, you know, the opportunity to, to grow um, a great career and, you know, economic mobility for our families, right? And their kids. Right. There's way more that we have in common right, right. Than, than divides us. But yet you have these forces. And, you know, that's what I think about with Donald Trump. Um, you may not agree with everything Kamala Harris stands for or says, but yeah. you know what? She's there for the people. When has Donald Trump ever been about anything other than himself? So we are where we are, but I think that we can get back to where we were um, if we get the right people with the right temperament and office. And people need leadership, right? I mean, unfortunately, Trump has taken too many um, in this really horrible direction. And and I'm confident we can can get it back. What is more challenging now, Sam, than, Mm -hmm. you know, what, eight years ago, 10 years ago when I first got elected, um, the use of uh, the proliferation of social media and the use, the weaponization of Mm -hmm. disinformation is just different now. And we really have to fight hard to show the the truth of what's happening, you know? And that I think is different and something we're going to have to contend with. Yeah. It feels even kind of quaint, like thinking about who I was when I would be worried about George Bush and be talking, it seems like pastoral. Yeah. And and the other thing is there's, there's a meanness or a cruelty that we see. Um, There's certainly been like, look at the increase in in anti-Semitism. Look at the increase in, in racial uh, bias and and, and incidents that have been reported. Mm -hmm. um, You know, it just, it's like, how, how did that happen? You know, the, the, the denigration of, you know, members of the LGBTQ plus community, like people with disabilities, like, wait a second, like, we're Americans, you know, we're supposed to be kind and good to one another. Fundamental decency, we've got to bring that back too, because that's something that also seems to just be like palpably different. And I don't know if it's because of what we all live through with the pandemic and, you know, people just being fried or the, the exploitation of disinformation, but that too is something different to me. Yeah, I mean, it's all. I think it's all that, and it is actually very 
Like we do need it. We do need that soothing bomb of talking about the future, of talking about like of having people gather in a joyful manner and people like the fixers, people who have a can-do attitude as opposed to just every time someone opens their mouth, it's just like American carnage. (laughs) Like every time he goes on X, it's just American carnage. Yep. I mean, I was just recently pleased because Massachusetts – we're number one in a lot. I'm not going to brag yeah. on Massachusetts, but I will say one thing that I really was uh, psyched hearing about was that we were ranked the number one place to have a baby and to raise a family. Mm-hmm. That's good, right? It's like yes. quality of life. It's like people, you want to be hopeful. You want to prepare for the next generation, right? And yes. we just we just need more of that. How do you grapple with, because you, cause you're out there all the time, I personally have hard time dealing with undecided voters. <laughs> That's my personal cross to bear. <laughs> I can't handle it. How do you, but you you have to bring patience and you have to bring discussion to it and you have to, you have to bring all of your best leadership qualities to that. What does it feel like? Is it frustrating in the moment when you're like, oh boy, the choice could not be more clear in my mind, but let's talk about it. <laughs> It, it just requires some understanding, you right. know? I mean, you're not going to win by telling somebody that they're wrong. Right. To me, you know, I bumped into a guy um, at Dunkin' Donuts the other day. I was, I was getting donuts before a daughter's soccer game. And, mm-hmm. you know, we started talking and it, it went to the election. And then, you know, um, he was, you know, he said he wasn't going to vote uh, for anyone. I said, well, wait a second. Like, tell me why. Well, nobody does anything. It's not, not for me. And I said, well, what's on your mind? And he talked mm-hmm. about the fact that his mother um, really can't afford to live in her house anymore. We've got right. to get down the cost of housing. And I was like, okay, that's super important. And let me tell you what Kamala Harris wants to do with that, right? You've got to connect these issues to people. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the abortion issue is super, super important. And not just for women, for right. everyone. And so like, you bump into people and, you know, I'll engage them on the conversation. Like, what do you want for your daughters? What do you want right. for your sons? Because now that Trump and Vance want to take away abortion, they also have put contraception and IVF on the table, right? Yeah. What does this say about what your sons and daughters are going to be able to do and the kind of families and life they're going to be able to choose to have or not have? So yeah. you can get a ways with people just by listening to them, understanding right. what's driving them. And then you can, you know, engage on on the policy, um, the substance of stuff. But it's hard. It's hard. What's what's really hard is to see the vitriol, you know. Right. And sometimes I just like, there's something sick and wrong with me because it makes me want to run to the flame even more and be like, what's really? what's going on with you? Right. Like, why do you <laughs> why do you feel what's, that way? Yeah. Why like, are you saying is, that? You know. What's and sometimes driving people the are willingness? Just like freaked out, and they actually are like, huh, somebody's listening to me. Were you always like that? Were you always like, I'll run into this, I'll run into this fire. Let me just, oh, I, I got to get in there. I was a peacemaker, you know? I'm okay. the oldest of five. My parents oh. got divorced. I was like a natural born sort of pleaser, right? My mom's a single mom. So yeah. I, I didn't want to see acrimony or fighting. So it was all, right. all a little bit about, you know, right. <laughs> a little right. bit of, that. that is my personality for better it's, or worse. It's a great, you know, it's like leading with curiosity. Like what is driving people's willingness yeah. to be so vitriolic? I, I do, you know, I do have some choice words about online anonymity, which is a real oh, shield. Oh my God. Talk about cowards. See, I don't read yeah. the comments though. I just no. don't. No, 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 you can't. I don't. No, you can't. You couldn't do your yeah. job. You couldn't do your nope. work. It's impossible. Mm-hmm. I am going crazy from all the, because I am reading a lot of op-eds, which I shouldn't do because they drive me a little, just kind of like intellectual, rich white men opining that they haven't heard enough details from Kamala Harris on stabilizing oh brain it's just prices. And I'm just like, what are you yeah. doing? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It, I mean, it is. It's. It's. Uh, you look it, it, as women. We are always in elections. We're running ten points behind mm-hmm. in any race. Um, right. You know, and it. And it's just this. This different lens that's applied to us. Somebody did that to me the other night, and I'm oh, like, really? seriously, like, let me give you like six. It was just like bing, bing, bing. Here, here are like eight things that she said policy wise. And meanwhile, what what have you heard from the other guy? You know, yeah, crickets. What's- so, or actually, pretty bad if you read twenty twenty five. Um, yeah. But I'm sure he hasn't read it. He's still talking about, he's just very fixated on how many people are coming to his rallies. 
Yeah, I think you can right. get them off anything by just yeah, or about people, that. or how many people are crossing the border, which by the way is lower than it was um, <laughs> in the Trump years. You know, we're now down below. So yes, yes. What? You, okay, so we know that you know Massachusetts isn't gonna go Trump, nor is my home state, New York. <laughs> what do you want residents of pretty decently safe blue states to be doing between now? an election day, and maybe after, God yeah. forbid. Yeah. Well, I think, Sam, a couple things. Know that you're not insulated, right? right? Like, your governors are going to do what they can to protect you. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if we elect a president of the United States who's going to move on a national abortion ban, who's going right. to start to track women's periods, who's going to weaponize the Department of Justice to investigate doctors and nurses and healthcare providers everywhere, right. like, we're in trouble. And that's just, like, one um, one area. So the first area, this point is like, no one is safe. Right. No one is safe. Um, and the second point is, please call anyone that you know who's living in a swing state. Mm -hmm. Maybe you went to college with them. You went to elementary school. Your kids have moved out there. You know, whatever, right? Colleagues from work, be in touch with them. Right. Like, don't don't wake up. November 6th and wonder what coulda, shoulda, mighta I have done. You know that this race is going to be so close and it's going to come down to a few thousand, maybe a few hundred votes, maybe a few dozen votes in particular counties right. or at the precinct level. So oh. do the outreach now, right? And make sure people that you know are voting. Um, I encourage a lot of people here in Massachusetts to get up where you can. I mean, if you can get out to a swing state, go for it. We have our neighbor, New Hampshire, to the north. There's an important yeah. governor's race there. I'm supporting Joyce Gregg, a Democrat um, who I want as a partner in office. There's a lot of good things that, that, that can be done around economic development for our New England region. Um, right. Kamala Harris, four electoral college votes up there. So just like get get after it. You know, we've only got a... <laughs> few Get weeks left after it call I your think, aunt and uncle in yeah. arizona <laughs> yeah and if you can get on you know if you can get on a plane or a bus or get in your right. car and drive to a swing state and volunteer i mean this is going to be a whole get out the vote operation in terms of what comes later we're going to have to you know um protect our election officials we're going to have to support democracy continue to demand that we live in a country that is an american democracy and that work is is ongoing, Sam. And then the the healing, right? You know, right. we talked at the beginning about bringing um, the not. It's not just the temperature down. It's more about just like bringing people more together um, instead of electing people and supporting people and giving airtime and credence to people who are clearly just out for themselves. Like right. it's like it's like a show. You know, to get back to a place where we're having dialogue, even if we're disagreeing, importantly, if we're disagreeing, because we're a democracy, different yeah. views. Yeah. You know, when I make decisions, I always try to get the best experts and, you know, uh, ideas in the room. But I, and I also encourage difference of opinion, like give me different views on something. That's right. how we get the best policies and decisions, I think. You have people who make a case, an opposite yeah. case to how you think you're going to go so that you can hone yourself so that you can really understand the contours of every situation yeah. this is very i mean this is this is very womanly of you <laughs> i really i really appreciate it well women leaders are mm -hmm. you know i serve with a great group of democratic women governors and yes. um talk about some great leaders so oh, yeah and i yeah. want to know i want to know everything about your email governor text thread if you don't mind i heard yeah. there is one is it's a support group Support, it's a support chat. Yep. I love that you all have that. Yeah, we learned about it from Governor Whitmer. And mm -hmm. we were like, tell me everything. Show me. And she was like, <laughs> absolutely not. This is very private. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of fangirling, though, supporting each right. other. This show you did, this clip of that, yeah. you go, you yeah. know, you know. So I so um I so appreciate your leadership on the subject of abortion. It is just so needed out there because there's so much disinformation yeah. about that as well. I mean, we literally just keep hearing the, the most outrageous stuff that's just not true, that just spreads like wildfire. And like a calm, collected, intelligent 
voice is so refreshing to my ears. Thank you. Well, yeah, thank you. We'll um, we'll keep at that because it's it's so important. I don't think m- most Americans want to see doctors go to jail no. simply for providing health care. I don't think that most Americans want to see survivors of rape and incest forced to carry their perpetrator's baby to term. No. Um, you know, people believe in freedom in this country and 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 understand that when they come for our bodies, I yeah. mean, there's there's no other freedom they're not going to come for. Yes, yes. This is just like bodily autonomy writ large. <laughs> yeah. I learned that you played professional basketball in um, Austria. Just pivoting, just hard <laughs> pivot. Like I know that I don't I know. Love it. I don't know a lot about sports, but isn't basketball for tall people? I'm just asking well, the question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, it is for tall people. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm five four, shrinking every day. Um, if you look behind <laughs> me, me, you see basketballs. Everybody gives me a lot of basketball stuff. But you know, I grew up in a small town in New Hampshire, and mm-hmm. You know, as I say, my mom um, was a single mom for a number of years. She had five of us. She sort of threw us into sports or dropped us off at the beach. We lived near the beach. Um, And, like, that's how we sort of survived and thrived. And so I had a chance to to go to college, play basketball, um, loved it. And then when you graduate, there was no pro league in the United States at that time. So I took advantage of a chance to go play in Europe and loved it, saw the world. It was great. It was great. And, you know, I, I have so many gifts from that game, teamwork. I mean, all the things you learn through sports, especially for women. And it's just been awesome to see the, the rise in interest in women's sports. Um, it's been great. And, you know, I still play, uh, from time to time with the Mm -hmm. women I, I played in leagues with and played pickup with after I got back and went to law school. And it's like, you always have that camaraderie. You always have those bonds. Now you just, you know, hurt a lot more the next morning when you wake up if you played the night before. Right, right, right. <laughs> you must have strong opinions about what you would like to see in terms of higher wages for female athletes. Like, I'm uh, sure, you know, that's such it's a, so infuriating. It's infuriating. Right? The whole reason that Brittany Griner was over in Russia to begin with is yeah. because she didn't make enough money playing in the United States. Women have to go to Europe to be able to, to, to make money. Um, yeah. And it's just ridiculous. The salary disparity between mm-hmm. male athletes and women athletes is ridiculous. ridiculous. And it's not about the product. Mm-hmm. I mean, how many people, to, to see this year, you know, the record turnout for um, the NCAA and the women's tournament sold more tickets um, than the men's and had more eyeballs than the men's games. Um, we have just seen the WNBA playoffs happening, record attendance. So, yes. you know. The product is 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 great, and people are drawn to it. The pay should should match that. So sure. I have, you know, I I have no patience for it. And yes, I have strong opinions. Strong opinions. I have strong, <laughs> strong opinions, opinions about mm, that. I don't like it one bit. <laughs> no, <laughs> but it's not? awesome. Like to see all these women playing sports, yeah. soccer, football, basketball. Yeah. You name it. Hockey. We just have a, we have a pro hockey team in Massachusetts. It's great. Okay, you put up. I think this is so funny. You put up pride billboards for Massachusetts, places like Florida, <laughs> telling them to come north. Did people do it? Yeah. <gasps> they did. I I've met it. so many. I mean, look. Such a so, good idea. Well, you know, it's like M- Massachusetts, like we're home to the first public school and public yeah. library in the country. We're also home to universal health care and marriage equality, right? We've been mm-hmm. a state that's been about welcoming people and protecting people. And, you know, I got so upset at people like DeSantis for these just outrageous, discriminatory, don't say gay laws. You're hurting people. And people know in Massachusetts, we're going to protect your your rights and we're going to protect your kids' rights too, so that they're safe in school, you know, or so that you're safe in the workplace. You know, in the face of that, we just thought it was a good opportunity for us to look. I'm a governor. I want, I want, I want people moving here. I want companies moving here, right? We just thought it was important to get the word out that you know, <laughs> come, come, um, come to Massachusetts. We're a great place. And honestly, I've met a lot of people who have moved here um, yeah. because they needed access to non-discriminatory health care. They wanted to make sure that 
you know, their kids were, were going to be protected. The abortion, I mean, young women are making a decision about where to go to college and university. And oh. like, God forbid you need access to an abortion, um, maybe even access to contraception, right? Because yeah. everything's on the table now with these guys. Yes. Yeah, I know. So people are coming to Massachusetts. That's a calculation in our home. I have three kids who are, you know, I have one in college now, two that like one is getting close and looking at schools. And he, even my son is like, we've really, I think I'm going to stick to the Northeast. It feels like yeah. it's just yeah. the safe zone. Yeah. And we don't ban books here either. Which no, is, we really which don't. Is, which is good. Did Ron DeSantis respond to you? Did he personally respond to you? He didn't or? personally respond. And you know okay. what's funny? We've got this like nonpartisan National Governors Association. Yeah. What I find truly pathetic is that neither um, Governor DeSantis or Governor Abbott in Texas mm -hmm. pay dues. So the uh, neither Texas nor Florida are part of the nonpartisan National Governors Association. Um, and I sort of think that says it all about them. Such sour grapes. So I haven't had a chance to bump into him. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. I bet he's a, the real life of the party. <laughs> what is your news diet? What do you consume? Are you like me? Do you wake up in the morning? Do you start reading the paper at five o'clock in the fives? Um, no, I'm, I'm more, well, the kids are up. I mean, we have school in the morning. We have a 13 and 11 year old. So, you know, we're, okay. we're, we're up and, and moving, um, a little bit before seven. I mean, okay. I've tried to make a habit of like, I am going to go downstairs make a cup of coffee, Okay. have a glass of water, and then look at my phone. Okay. Right? I like that. That works about one out of every eight days okay. as a plan. <laughs> okay. But, you know, I am me I'm still a newspaper person. You know, I read, I read, uh, there's a couple of local papers that I read every morning. I read the, the Wall Street Journal and, yeah. uh, and the Times. It's a quick, quick read through that. I get on some of the news sites. Can't help myself. Gotta, Can't help gotta, it. Can't help it. You just got to like, and then later in the day, in the evening, I wind down um, my Instagram feed, which I know is just like not what I'm supposed to be doing, right? right? We're supposed right. to be turning off all of our screens. Sure. Um, and, you know, just can't help it. Discipline is hard. Yep. It's hard. <laughs> we, <laughs> I hope at least you put it in a lockbox when you are on vacation, although I know you never probably take one. No. Yeah, okay. no. And and uh, no, there's there's no no lockbox. Um, mm. I don't I don't know what I would I mean, I I, I I try to take some time, but it's it's right. It's not not happening. So if we how can we I love to have an action plan. I love to Finish a conversation with, I feel like we all need an action plan right now. So we're saying, in your opinion, that all of us who are in our little blue state enclaves, mm -hmm. don't get You're lazy. Not. You're not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are mm -hmm. things that can happen. We do not yeah. want these things to happen. And to prevent more terrible things from happening, we are contacting our distant relatives in relatives, relatives, roommates, roommates, colleagues, former colleagues. I mean, people that you dated. It just doesn't matter. Just like mm -hmm. everyone, like anyone you know, yeah. in a in a swing state in particular, um, make sure they're registered. Make sure they're voting, and just like be out there. If you have time go to these places because they need people to knock doors. They need people to make phone calls. If you can't leave your home, there's ways to get in touch with those states' parties and, you know, make phone calls from your house. And check your registration. Check, check your, your registration. registration. Because, you know, unfortunately, some of what we've seen is, um, we've seen just continued efforts to block the vote, suppress the vote, make yeah. it so damn hard for people to vote. So check your registration and check the registration of those uh, who you care about, <laughs> right. you know, make sure that they've done what they need to do. Um, so those are all things, Sam, that are really important. And like every day, every hour that goes by, it's just like one day Ooh. lost. So just, just power through. Um, we power through, we do the work. It's going to be okay. Yeah, you it know? is going to be gonna okay. Be okay. Um, but it doesn't just happen and you can't rely on other people. You can't rely on other people. These right. races are going to be decided by very few votes. So right. 
Make sure you're talking to people. Use your voice. Use your voice. Okay, my last question is, and this is going to air after the VP debate, but if you had a question, (laughs) if you were moderating the debate, what would you ask? I'd want to know, what is it that J.D. Vance is going to do for people? Um, He's he's. He's been about denigrating people, uh, tearing people apart, just like Trump. What are the what are the positive things you're going to do for people, right. and what are you going to do to make sure that this election is conducted in a safe um, and responsible way? And can we count on you to um, accept the results of the election? Because that's the heart of democracy, right? And the transfer yeah. of power. You're going to accept the results of the election. Yeah, the room yeah. that you're in. The room that you're in right now, the place where you live. And I'd also speak to people about, like, I'd also ask a question about what is it in your life experience, your biography, you know, gives you what it takes to be president and represent the American people. Because you don't get to be just for some people, like, you have to represent all Americans. And, you know, I think about that all the time. You know, if I hadn't had my experience playing basketball um, having working, you know, all the time as a kid, yeah. uh, waitressing. I was a cocktail waitress, you know, right. all through college and law school. Like those experiences, you know, learning from a mom who was working hard as a as a nurse to raise us. Like those are the things that inform my leadership today. So, you know, I'd give them both an opportunity to speak to what really are um, pretty different trajectories in terms of how they've spent their time and what they've done in their careers and. Uh, you know, as I said earlier, um, I, I have great respect for, for Governor Tim Walz. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, I've likened him to uh, the linebacker to the water boy, not to use a football <laughs> analogy, but I'm going to in this instance with, with Coach Walls. Yeah. Um, and and that's no disrespect to water boys, of course, but you know what I mean. Um, I do. You know, who's got the substance and in, in, in the and the heart and the integrity behind them? That's the that's what That's what you got to tease out. Yes, that's what the voters have got to see. Yeah, we want someone with heart. We want heart, please. I appreciate this so much. Thank you so much for speaking to me today. This was amazing. I knew it would be a thrill to talk to you. Oh my gosh. Come see me in Boston sometime. That was Governor Maura Healy, and I had no choice but to uh, look up one thing. Governor Healy was a professional basketball player in Austria, which is amazing. How many other politicians have been professional basketball players? Well, there's Bill Bradley, who was an NBA player before he became a three-term senator. Former Education Secretary Arne Duncan played basketball in Australia. Plus, former mayors of Sacramento and Detroit had NBA careers as well and plenty of other members of Congress, and of course, me. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I make myself laugh. Wow. Thanks for joining us. I'm Samantha B. and see you next week for some more Choice Words. For listening to Choice Words, which was created by and is hosted by me. The show is produced by Zvia Baron Reinstein with editing and additional producing by Josh Richmond. We're distributed by Lemonada Media, and you can find me at Real Sam B on X and Instagram. Follow Choice Words wherever you get your podcasts or listen ad-free on Amazon Music with your Prime membership. <laughs> <laughs>